welcome back, everyone. It's a modeler named Kelly. Uh, basic, our next uh, presenter is Michael Walter. He is an O-scale model railroader from Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, his layout is a combination of vintage Lionel trains commingled with two-rail hand-laid track, and he's currently in the process of building a station for the two-rail layout. He's also a part-time urologist. I, that's an interesting, interesting uh, point. But we'll we'll find out about that later. Hopefully, uh, it's all for you, Mike. Hello, everybody. I'm pleased to be here. You know, we're going to talk about uh, soldering and, in particular, resistance soldering. And the part-time urologist, I'm semi-retired at this point. I <laughs> have more time to do the trains. So the. <clears throat> Most of my presentation is on a video. Uh, I couldn't do it live because there's way too many things that could go wrong with each step. Uh, so I think now we will proceed to the video. Hello, this, this is a clinic about soldering, soldering 101 through 110. I'm Mike Walter, and let's get started. I want to start out by giving a little background about soldering, some of the basics. For those of you who already know this, please bear with me, but it does make sense when you actually get uh, into soldering. Soldering is a method of joining two metals together uh, it's not quite a glue, but it functions as a glue. Uh, the metals that you can use for soldering easily are copper-based, which therefore are copper, brass, which is copper and zinc, bronze, which is copper and tin, uh, and you can solder mild steel. Um, the, uh, the soldering aluminum uh, is much more difficult. There are special solders that can be used uh, but I would not advise trying that unless you're in industry. Um, soldering white metal castings, um, you cannot do. Uh, ask me how I know that. What happens is that the melting point of the white metal is about the same as the solder and your casting turns into a small puddle. Um, soldering produces a strong joint when it's done properly. Soldering is forgiving. If you make a joint and the alignment is not correct, you can reheat, realign, <clears throat> and your joint will be just as good the second time as the first. It'll be just as good the 100th time as the first. Uh, <clears throat> so in that sense, it holds an advantage over gluing, where if you don't get it right the first time, um, you kind of have to start all over again. Well, how does, what is solder? <clears throat> solder. Uh, is a metal, a low melting point. Uh, soft solder, uh, which we use for electronics and which I use for almost every function in model railroading, uh, is an alloy of tin and lead. Uh, this is an, uh, a 60% tin, 40% lead, which is the most common uh, uh, combination you can I solders in all different combinations. The more tin, the stronger the solder, the higher the melting point. Uh, silver solder is also available. It's an alloy of copper, silver, and lead, mostly silver. It, uh, regular solder has a melting point of about 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Silver solder uh, has a melting point of about 840 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if you're going to silver solder, uh, you can do small joints with a resistance iron, uh, larger joints with a torch. The, um, uh, a regular soldering iron will not get hot enough to work silver solder. Um, how do you solder? Uh, solder is actually is, is done by heating the work, the piece that you're going to solder, and letting the solder uh, melt by touching the piece. What this creates is actually a superficial mixture of the atoms, the tin in the solder and the 
the copper uh, in the work uh, will actually form a small uh, ionically bonded mixture on the surface. That's what makes it a strong bond. Uh, if you melt the solder uh, before you heat the uh, work uh, to melting point of solder, then you, the solder will ball up and it will not uh, form that uh, mixture on the surface of the metal. And you will get what's called a cold joint. We'll demonstrate that uh, in a while. Um, the, uh, <coughs> the metal has to be clean. Uh, metals form a, a superficial oxide layer. The mixture of solder and the metal does not occur well if there is an oxide. Uh, and it's not good enough just to polish the brass with a wire brush or sandpaper um, because the oxidation occurs rapidly and it occurs even more rapidly when you heat the work to apply the solder. So we use a flux. A flux is a compound. Uh, this is rosin flux. Uh, this is acid flux. Uh, the flux is a reducing agent and it eliminates the oxide uh, at the uh, surface of the metal long enough for the soldering to take place. Uh, acid flux is phosphoric acid, ammonium chloride. This happens to be zinc chloride. It's corrosive. You have to wash it off immediately. Doesn't have much use uh, in the uh, things that we're soldering. Uh, rosin flux uh, was originally a mixture of organic resins obtained from pine sap. Yeah, there's now uh, better ways of producing it, uh, but it's a paste. Um, but the soldering tools, uh, any soldering tool is something that heats the metal to the melting point of solder. Um, and we have a variety of them. And that's what we're going to talk about the rest of the clinic. Uh, this is the standard uh, soldering pencil or soldering iron. Uh, it's electric, it heats up uh, the element and to the melting point of solder, and then you apply the hot iron uh, to the metal, uh, and that uh, brings it to the melting point of, uh, that brings it to the melting point of the solder, uh, and the solder will start to flow. Um, a soldering gun is similar uh, to an iron in that uh, the heating element uh, here at the tip is brought to the temperature melting point of solder and then um, you apply it after it's heated you apply it to the work the work heats up and then you apply the solder uh, these are great for electrical and for small uh, small parts um, the uh, for larger parts and for silver solder uh, a torch uh, is useful and this is a torch that uh, fairly easy and to do and it's recharged uh, with uh, uh, with butane that you get to fill your cigarette lighter ultimately and that's the purpose of the main part of this talk is the use of a resistance soldering unit the resistance soldering unit doesn't heat the element. The resistance soldering unit um, passes the current through the work and the work heats up as the current passes through. It's the same technique as, it's the same uh, idea as the soldering iron uh, in that electricity uh, forms the heat. But in the case of the soldering gun, the electricity passes through the tip and heats it up. In the case of resistance uh, soldering, the electricity passes through the work. This results in a much faster heating of the work, uh, much more precise heating of the work, um, and therefore this has a great advantage. Now, the, the downside to resistance soldering is it's a little pricey. Uh, good units run in the range of $500 to $700, but well worth it if you're going to do a lot of soldering. Uh, the beauty of the resistance iron uh, 
is ease of application, but moreover, it heats the work locally very quickly. Uh, so you saw you get in and out before the rest of the work heats and melts the, uh, the piece that you just soldered nearby. Uh, that's the biggest problem in soldering and especially in small parts uh, is applying heat and having the last piece, you, the last joint you made um, come unsoldered uh, as you're trying to do the next. General soldering uh, techniques. Uh, there are <clears throat> two ways to apply solder. Uh, you can apply the solder by heating the work and then uh, putting the solder next to it like this, um, or you can pre-tin the work. You can uh, apply solder to each of the two parts of the joint and then uh, um, heat the two parts together and the solder uh, that you've applied will uh, join. This segment concerns the resistance unit itself. Let me introduce you. This uh, is the resistance soldering unit. It consists of a large transformer inside with multiple leads uh, at various voltages. Um, this is a dial that determines the amount of energy that goes to the probes uh, and the power on and off switch. Uh, there are two different probes that you can use to solder. There are the soldering tweezers, uh, in which the electricity comes from the transformer through one tip across the work like this to the other electrode which then completes the circuit. Uh, the heat occurs right at the tip. To prep the tip um, you want a, a parallel surface for application of the probe to the metal. So I dress it before every so often on a mill file so that I get a nice clean um, surface. Remember, it has to conduct electricity. So if there's a lot of carbon buildup, then it won't uh, conduct electricity and it won't work. Uh, the other kind of probe uh, is a carbon electrode um, probe. This is a quarter inch carbon electrode with a copper coating. Uh, and this is the grounding uh, cable. So in this case, what you do is apply the grounding to the work somehow. Uh, I like to use a hemostat if the work is already, if I'm already working on a piece, find a place to ground the work. Uh, for smaller parts, I like to ground it uh, with a vise, and so I simply clamp it uh, between the table and the vise. Now I have electricity coming into the vise. Um, I'll put the work in the vise, and now we're ready uh, to solder. We'll turn the unit on, select a temperature or a, a current. To prep the probe, I like to use a chisel point, so I take the file again and file it smooth and parallel so that I get a nice tip. Every so often you'll have to dress it because as you work, the carbon will deteriorate and the tip will change shape. Again, uh, we talked about using flux to make the solder flow uh, and create that mixture at the surface of the joint. So we apply a little flux. Uh, you want to heat away from the solder. So in this case, we can apply the heat underneath. And then uh, there is a foot pedal that completes the circuit once you uh, have got the uh, soldering probe in the proper position. So I've got the probe touching. I'm going to apply heat with my foot on the pedal. And there the solder flows very readily onto the work. 
this is called tinning because I have, um, I'm going to prep the other piece in the same way and then heat the joint and allow the two soldered surfaces to join each other. Um, so that's uh, how the resistance iron works uh, and the two probes. You can buy resistance irons that only have either the electrode, uh, carbon electrode probe or the tweezer probe, but I find that you really need both uh, to do all, have the versatility that you need. Uh, let's tin the other side and just pick a random piece of brass out of the, out of the box. Again, if you don't apply flux, it may not quite heat so or flow so easily. This happens to be pretty good, but uh, a lot of times there will not be uh, a good joint there. So we've got a little solder on both pieces. The next trick is to join the two. And for that, remember that you cannot hang on to the part yourself. So I like to use a hemostat um, because it has a latch and then you can uh, hold it without and, and hold it in place without uh, burning your fingers. Uh, put the two tin pieces together, touching. That will complete the circuit. We heat the work until the solder flows and the joint's complete. The smoke is the flux that's evaporating and hold it until the solder solidifies. There you have a nice joint. Now, if you look at it and say, well, that's not quite right, The nice thing about soldering is it's forgiving. I can re redo the joint. Let's say I wanted to make it at an angle rather than a square. So I'll heat up the work, move it to where I want it, let the thing cool. And I'm keeping the probe on the work, although I've taken my foot off the pedal, so as to steady the work and hold it where I want it until the solder hardens. And now we've got it. the second joint is different, but it's just as strong as the first joint. I can make this joint over as many times as I want, and the final uh, joint will be just as good. Now, the other forgiving thing about solder is that if you get, get too much, you can actually uh, brush the solder off um, and clean up your joint. Um, for that, I'm going to just heat the work a little bit um, and use, I like to use a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, heat the work and then when, as soon as you see the solder turn a, a bright silver, just brush it off real quick. Uh, if you're quick about it, you won't uh, melt the toothbrush bristles too much. Now I've cleaned the joint up. You can do final cleaning uh, with a motor tool. And what you'll notice about the joint, when you have a good joint, if you can pan in, uh, a good joint will have a nice fillet uh, of solder right uh, where the two pieces join. It will not, this one, this joint part right here is not quite so clean. Uh, but we could have uh, dressed it up a little just like we did before. Uh, so that's basically the solder, the uh, resistance. One of the most useful things uh, in soldering in order to get uh, the piece to come out exactly right is to figure out a jig uh, to hold the pieces in the exact location you want uh, while you're soldering. Uh, this is an example of soldering uh, with a jig these are doors that would go on the front of my uh, station. Uh, they're actually modeled after doors in the Kansas City Union uh, station. Uh, but they're made out of brass. There are two layers. Uh, two pieces go up and down and two pieces go crosswise. And on the back side, uh, there are 
aimed the uh, focused the other way, so they're oriented the other way, so that uh, there are joints at each corner that stabilize it. Um, and you can see back here, not very well, but the, in the back, the top piece goes all the way across, while in the front, the uh, uprights go all the way up. Uh, to do that, I made a jig that held the uh, <coughs> pieces perfectly square. Uh, and here, a lot of C-clamps are useful, as well as a square to be sure that you have set the uh, jig perfectly square. Uh, with the resistance iron set up, uh, I'm going to use the probe. So what I often do with the grounding lead is to clamp it uh, to a piece of metal, and I have sacrificed an old tri-square ruler um, for this purpose. Uh, and that way, the current will come from the uh, unit through the probe, through the work, and back through the ground. And so I've completed the electrical circuit. Uh, by the way, uh, this is why you can't resistance solder on a painted surface because the paint will act as an insulator and prevent the uh, uh, current from uh, circuit from being completed. So once I've set up the jig and assured that it's square, then I place the pieces in the jig. Now, I use, I've sacrificed an old file because it has a rough surface that keeps it from slipping on the work and it will hold the, the pieces in absolute uh, <clears throat> stable position while I apply the solder. Again, you can't use your fingers. You always have to think in advance of some way to do the soldering without uh, touching the work. Um, now I've got it set just right and I will apply the heat. By the way, when you are soldering, uh, you know that the, the soldering is taking place because you can actually feel uh, a, a vibration through the unit. And of course that vibration is 60 cycles per second because what you're doing is running the uh, house AC current, uh, all those steps down through the work. Uh, if you don't feel that, that vibration, uh, then the resistance iron is not working. You haven't completed your circuit. Uh, so once that's uh, cooled off, I'll pull it out of the jig and it's perfect. Uh, now on the back side, got a little extra solder there. Um, so we need to clean that off. And to do that, I will fix the work um, with another clamp. I can take this one off and use it. That will keep, as I heat this and, and remove this solder, that will keep the joint from, uh, from being disrupted. Uh, again, my trusty toothbrush. Apply the heat to where I want the solder to be removed. Once it uh, becomes a uh, shiny molten state, I can reach in uh, with the toothbrush and remove the excess. I'm doing this left-handed, so it's not, not quite as smooth as it usually goes. So I've gotten rid of the extra excess solder in the joint. Uh, if I want to dress it up with a Dremel wire brush, that's how it looks. Now, in this particular case where the brass is to be left unfinished, of course, all the solder uh, had to be removed uh, where, wherever it was in excess. Uh, this part is to demonstrate the fact that you can actually solder, solder steel. Uh, uh, my rail is uh, mild steel. Uh, and uh, I have pre-painted it. This is actually just a leftover section uh, that I'm using for demonstration. Uh, 
when it's painted, of course, uh, the electricity will not flow into the work. So you have to clean off part of the rail uh, to allow electricity to get into the rail for the resistance unit to work. Uh, so, uh, and of course, the top of the rail is going to have the paint cleaned off of it anyway. So I apply it into the vise. The vise is connected to the grounding cable uh, of the resistance unit. I have made a mark uh, with a paint pen as to wh exactly where I want the wire lead to go. <clears throat> and now, and then I have cleaned the uh, bottom side of the rail with a wire brush uh, to expose the part where the rail joint is, uh, is going to take place. Um, <clears throat> the wire uh, is just, I use a 16 gauge uh, electrical uh, lamp wire. Uh, and it's only, it goes down below the, the, the sub road bed and then is attached to 12 gauge wire uh, that runs the rest of the distance. But this is great for a, for a drop lead. Uh, apply um, flux to the work, heat the iron. The, remember the difference between conventional soldering and resistant soldering is that in conventional, you wanna heat the element to the melting point of solder before you start your work. Uh, with resistance, you apply the unit and then turn the electricity on. And we'll, you'll see that as we go along. So I'm starting to get a little smoke, so that means the flux on the tip of the solder is melting and we've reached the correct temperature. Apply the solder to the work. I mean, the, the point of the uh, soldering iron to the work and let the, let the uh, solder flow into the work. As you see by capillary action, the solder flows wherever there is uh, metal that's hotter than its melting point. Next, we'll prepare this solder tip to be joined. And what I do there is to make a right angle bend because the wire is going to come straight down and then flatten this out. And now I've got a good joint here. So I just get rid of the rest of this and my joint will be just like that with this piece coming down uh, through the road bed. Now uh, we need to pretend uh, the rail. It's very difficult to uh, simply just heat it up and expect this solder to join the rail. So we will make a little pretend area on the rail. Again, flux is applied the, uh, and we'll use the resistance unit here. Place the, the probe here. Remember, I've got a complete circuit now. The electricity goes in through the probe, through the rail, through the vise, through the grounding cable, and back to the uh, resistance unit. Uh, push the foot pedal to complete the circuit. And you can see it heats up very quickly. And this, I get a little bead of solder right there. And that's a solder applied to steel. So you've seen it yourself that steel can be soldered. Once I get to have the two tinned pieces, it's a simple matter to uh, place the wire where you want it. And notice that my fingers are an inch or two away uh, so they won't get burned. Although I've got plenty of burn spots over the years and apply that. With pre tin parts, it doesn't matter where you place the joint, but you have to stabilize it. I've got my foot off the pedal and I'm stabilizing it until the solder dries. Not a good joint, so we'll start over again. That's a cold joint. That means that I didn't really have enough heat uh, on the rail. So, Pre-tin it. There, now the rail is heated ac 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 adequately. And I've used the probe with the, my foot off the pedal just to stabilize the joint until the solder cools. I'm glad you got to see that sometimes it's not that easy. Maybe a 
a little flux in there. Okay, I can see that the solder uh, has uh, melted uh, to a very shiny surface, which means good melting. And I'm holding this steady until the joint heat uh, cools. Now I think it should be, now it's good and solid. So that's soldering uh, steel. Uh, and that joint, of course, will be hidden under the track. At the beginning of the video, uh, you saw uh, the station that I'm building uh, with the brass work that was involved. Uh, there were several uh, lattice joints in the project and I wanted to show you basically how that was done uh, so that <laughs> you get an idea of the versatility of the resistance iron. Uh, the lattice was made uh, by using C channels uh, with a spacer in between that's cut to the desired width um, and then uh, strip pieces that are going to fit in a crisscross pattern uh, like this. Uh, to do the soldering, um, first you tin the work um, and to tin I will put a little flux where I want the small amount of solder to go. I've got the soldering tweezers so remember that the electricity is going through one probe through the work and into the other probe and at that point it will heat up very rapidly uh, and I will place the solder right there and then we'll move it to the other end after it cools a little bit. A little flux and a quick takes about a second to apply enough heat for that really thin piece of brass and then it will go this way. Now we will tin the other side and in this case, this is a larger piece, so I will use the um, probe. This delivers more electricity, more heat, more rapidly. I've made marks on the uh, channels as to where uh, this piece will go. So we will lightly tin those areas using the resistance probe. I have placed the grounding wire uh, underneath the vise, so the electricity is going through the grounding wire, the vise, and into the work, and into the work on this side. So a quick application of flux uh, to the area we're going to, to solder to. And then again, it doesn't take but a very quick application of the heat to get a small bead of solder. I know it's working because I can feel the vibration in the unit and I can see the flux starting to melt. Doesn't take much. What this does, that gets your joint, the connection between the solder and the brass already made so you don't have to uh, use quite so much current now. I will use the tweezers to apply the lattice because we don't need but very, a very small amount of, uh, of solder. It looks like I missed the, the location a little bit, didn't follow my own marks, uh, but I will put it right like that. Now, I've got the soldering uh, ground wire uh, applied here, so you have to disconnect that before you use the tweezers. Otherwise, the current will come in this tweezer and out this, but it'll also go out this and you will get an excessive heat. Uh, so for this part, we remove the grounding wire because the tweezers are, are their own grounding wire. Uh, and ask me how I know that. Just put it exactly where you want it. Apply the, apply the heat. You can see it melt. And as soon as you're done, you can use the tweezers to hold the work exactly where it needs to be until the solder cools. I've got that joint. So once that's solid, I can go over and do this side. 
there the solder melts and you see how when it melts properly it by capillary action it goes between the two pieces of metal and forms a nice fillet along the edge. Now that that's solid, I can come back and dress this one the same way. Get a, get a really good joint. And I can clean that up with a toothbrush if I need to, uh, but that's how the lattice work was done. A cold joint. Remember, a cold joint happens because you didn't heat the work up enough to, be, to melt the solder and cause that ionic uh, joint uh, where the solder mixes in with the surface uh, molecules of the uh, uh, work. So what that occurs when you heat up the solder but not the joint. And I'm going to try to make this work and show you how that's done. There's a cold joint. See how that beads up? It doesn't lie flat and smooth. Um, and it pops right off. It did not, uh, I melted the solder, but it landed on a cold piece of metal, so it didn't make the joint. If you heat it up properly and heat the work and not the solder, when the work gets up to the proper temperature, the solder will flow. And that's a, that's a good joint. See how it flows and by capillary action fills up all the area that uh, has been heated. I've shown you uh, several ways to solder and some of the tricks and some of the uh, scientific background in what we're doing. Uh, the basic tools of soldering uh, are either a soldering pencil, a soldering gun, in which case the uh, element is heated, a resistance unit, in which case electricity flows through the work and heats it at the point of contact, or for larger pieces, a torch. Um, remember to heat the work and not the solder, and then let the solder flow on, the solder will flow onto the heated uh, work and make you a good joint and not a cold joint. The use of jigs is important because you can't um, <coughs> hang on to the piece with your finger while you're soldering. Uh, so remember we use C-clamps and uh, basic uh, pieces of metal to form jigs. Uh, I've made larger jigs for larger pieces. As you saw at the beginning, uh, when we panned through the station, uh, that required some large jigs. Put the pieces in their final uh, location. Uh, remember that soldering is forgiving and that if you make a bad joint, you take it apart clean it up and remake it. The second time around, it will be just as good a joint as the first time. Come try that with wood or plastic and see what happens. Um, there is still a learning curve uh, to soldering. Uh, believe me, I've uh, been through most of the mistakes. I've had multiple parts melt in front of my eyes. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that uh, this is a car that I built uh, about 40 or 50 years ago with an old fashioned iron and it still uh, came out. I could have done it a whole lot faster with the resistance iron. Uh, remember with the resistance iron, uh, even though it's a little pricey, uh, <coughs> it's still very worthwhile. This is a PBL unit. Uh, it has both the tweezers and the probe with the grounding wire. Uh, but again, I would encourage you uh, to learn this skill. Uh, it's very gratifying uh, when you uh, learn how to do it. Uh, and I think it's part of your general model railroading armamentarium. Thank you for your attention. I guess it's live then. It's good to go, Kelly. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, welcome back. Mike, that was interesting. Very interesting. In fact, uh, I played with that, uh, uh, the, the tweezers soldering, which is really interesting, especially doing uh, connections for uh, feeders for the rail at our club.
Uh, a lot of questions. Uh, first question is, were you using acid flux solder or is there a difference in solders? No, <clears throat> the flux and solder are two different components. The solder uh, is regular solder, which is <clears throat> uh, lead and tin. Mm -hmm. uh, flux is just a chemical that removes the oxidation from the work. Uh, mostly we use resin core. Uh, a mm -hmm. resin uh, as a flux, and that is uh, is something that originally came from pine sap. Uh, acid core, uh, acid flux uh, is used more for silver solder. It uh, is uh, zinc chloride uh, or uh, other uh, zinc components, uh, hydrochloric acid. Uh, that's much more caustic. Um, <clears throat> it's it's good for if you're if you're soldering galvanized uh, metal, which uh, is more, much more difficult to do. Um, the, uh, but flux and solder are two different components. Now, a lot of times the, <clears throat> the flux will come in the core of the solder. Uh, what I'm using is solid solder and applying the flux separately. Yep. Okay. Uh, second question. What is the optimum wattage or estimated current that you're setting your uh, adjust to? That depends on the work. <clears throat> there are five settings on the resistance iron, and you will learn by doing. Uh, if you have fine work, you'll want to do uh, level two or sometimes level three. Uh, <clears throat> I have had the experience of having it accidentally on five, for a, which I was using before. Even the brass melted or vaporized. Uh, so it depends on the volume of work that you're doing as to which setting to use. Uh, this is, a, I think it's a 250 watt uh, unit altogether. And <clears throat> the extra power is helpful for when you're soldering larger components. Okay. A uh, question about the flux. Do you get corrosive corrosion from the acid flux you get corrosion actually from both and i've <clears throat> gone back and looked especially on the steel so when i finish and i didn't make that point well uh, i clean the joint uh, acetone is what i've uh, read i use naphtha but any organic solvent will clean it off and then you won't have that problem Okay, uh, Ben Copeland asked the question, talked about the smoke coming off the flux. He's uh, got it gives him breathing problems since he's alert since he's allergic to the pine. If that's what the flux is made of, um, is there a flux that doesn't use resin? Uh, well, acid flux does not, but it also uh, <clears throat> has a fairly accurate uh, smoke to it. Uh, what I do is I turn the fan on. Mm. I've got a fan. I just turn a fan on and or blow it away with my uh, <clears throat> with my breath. Uh, okay. It does. It is a little noxious. All right. Uh, grounding. I noticed that when you were using the uh, uh, the, the the single probe, uh, you connected the the uh, ground to the vice, and two things came out. One from a question from the post. Uh, one was uh, heating up the vice. Does the vice get, does it act like a cold sink or does it heat up? And from my point of view, what about if you become the ground by touching the vice? Uh, no, the vice doesn't get hot. I mean, theoretically it would, uh, but the point of maximum heat is where the probe touch the carbon electrode touches the work. Yes, if you <clears throat> held the probe there, for another five or 10 minutes, eventually uh, the vice would heat up, but that's not a, a problem in actual practice because the, the work heats up uh, very rapidly um, um, and you accomplish your joint uh, long before the vice ever gets even too hot to touch. Mm -hmm. And what, what about the grounding? Uh, you becoming a ground? Uh, it prefers to to go through the, the current prefers to go back through the metal uh, and back through the ground in the unit. Um, I've never been shocked. Okay, good. All right. All right. Uh, 
I don't have any other questions. So I would like to say thank you, Mike, for your presentation. It's very been very informative uh, to me and hopefully to others uh, on the differences of uh, on how to do soldering, or as the Aussies say, soldering. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your presentation. You're very welcome. It was an experience and a half. Have a good day. Thank you.